welcome back to our second family quiz. Today is going to be similar to last time. We're going to go through the rounds. We'll do, we've got seven rounds in total. It's a little bit different. The, the themes of the rounds are different. And also there is a treasure hunt round, which you might have to move about a bit for. But we'll do the same as last time. We're going to do a couple of rounds and then give you the answers as we go through. And you will have to mark at home. There is one difference though. This time there will be a prize for one of the families that are taking part this evening. So what we need you to do is comment with your team name and then you can tell us your score at the end. So if you comment with your team name and your score at the end and Mrs Bingo and I will put your name into a drawer and we'll pick one out. The prize will be revealed later. Mm, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're ready, yeah? yeah. We're gonna dive straight in with the first round, bit of a curveball. It's Fast and Furious. So Fast and Furious, we're going to show you some pictures and we want you to think which films have inspired these theme park rides. So if you look for the clues in the pictures, there are clues, but you need to look carefully. So number one, which film do you think might have inspired this ride? Just write the film. Number two, look carefully, see if you can see any clues, which film do you think might have this right. It could be a franchise of films. Yeah, a series. A series. <laughs> <laughs> Big clue in this one. <laughs> but you have to look Which for it. Which film do you think might have inspired this ride? Hopefully mums and dads can help with this one and grow I'd really like to go on this ride. Yeah. I think I might be freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Which series of films do you think might have inspired this ride? Quite dressed up, aren't they, for a theme park? <laughs> <laughs> they are. Oh, looking straight at the camera too. And this one. Which film do you think might have inspired this ride? Have a good look, have a think about films you might have seen. A bit more tricky this one, I think. That is tricky, I think, yeah. I like how the people are sitting in the ride. I mean, some of the carriages are a bit different. Because I think that's a bit of a clue for the... Yeah. I have been on this ride and I have been in the orange carriage. Oh, there you go. <gasps> this ride, huge clues in this one. Which film do you think may have inspired this ride? Film and TV programme. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, name of the TV program I think is sort of on the screen. <laughs> oh, again, mums and dads might have to help out with this one but you might have seen it. So which I don't, film I don't know. I don't know do you one. think inspired this one? It's um, It links to a, film, a scene quite near the end of the film. This okay. I don't picture. think I've seen this film. So <gasps> I've seen this, this film. film. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favourite films. So, which film do you think inspired this ride? And this one, again, some good clues in the picture there. Yeah. Which series of films do you think inspired this one? This looks like this a fun ride good. to go on, actually. So does this one. So, this could be one of several films, but have a think. Which Depending film. on how old you are, I think this you could, could be. You could give it two different names, yeah. And are you accepting both names? I think so, I think we should. Cause okay. Could be right, that's the end of your first round, so hopefully you've got ten answers. We've got ten questions again. This round is Ooh. Where's Wally? But you're not going to have to be too specific because we're only asking which continent Wally is in. Now, hopefully at home you know the seven continents, that's a clue. Um, if you don't, perhaps you need to decide, are you going to let yourselves look up what the continents are first? Because yeah. otherwise it would be quite tricky you to... You could pause, couldn't you, and have a quick look at what the continents yeah. are. And, and then, then you come can back come back because there's answers, there's ten questions. Now, if you've done really good maths there, you might have worked out that as there's only seven continents, you might have to okay. repeat a couple. So let's see. Okay, first of all, here's Wally. He says, I have seen these native animals in this continent. Where is Wally? Which continent is he in? I think we've started with one that's 
I think most people will get this. I think they might get a little bit more challenging. Question two. He's giving you a clue this time. He says, the dry valleys here are the driest place on earth. On average, it is the windiest continent. So we're looking for the driest and the windiest mm. continent. Have a think. Oh, here's Wally again. This is a bird's eye view of somewhere in this continent. Now, once you've worked out where he is, have a think which continent is that placed in. This is a very famous city. I'm going to give you that. <laughs> Just in case you're thinking, ah, very famous part of the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've been there and it is actually huge. huge. Okay, another clue. This is the second largest continent in the world. It's home to the world's longest river. Year three, I think, year four. And it is estimated that over 2,000 different languages are spoken here. Please, then. Let's give them a bit of thinking time. Don't want to go too quickly. Question five. This is another bird's eye view of somewhere in the continent where Wally is. But which continent is he in? It's a huge is it true that that can be seen from space? Um, yes and no. Oh. It can be. It is seen from some satellites, as far as I understand, some satellite photography, but not in its entirety, only sections of it that still remain. But if you were sort of standing on the moon, no, you wouldn't be able to see. That would be a bit too far. He says, I've been collecting some flags from some of the countries in this continent. Which continent is he in? So have a look, he's got four flags. Now, if World you're a Cup football fan, handy, right? you're going to recognise at least one of those quite quickly, I think. Um, so have a think about where those flags are from, and then which continent. Question seven. Oh, he's out animal spotting again. He's seen these native animals in this continent. You have to think carefully here. Sometimes what is a bit tricky, I this think. Is Question eight. This is another bird's eye view. A very, very famous place. I would think if you know the name of that place and then which continent he's in. I'd like to make it. I've never been. Have you been? I would like to. No, I've not been. No. I would like to. I do have a friend who went and they went in a helicopter over it and said it was stunning because it's much bigger than you realise in this place. Another clue for question nine. This continent is known by two names. It's the world's smallest and flattest continent. You don't need to write down both names. You only need to write down the name you know it by, but I will give you both answers just in case. So you'll accept One name answers. I think if you're a child in your house, you might be using, <laughs> and the other name that adults might be telling you is the right answer, but you could both be right. So please don't fall out. <laughs> And finally, question 10. I have ordered some local cuisine for my dinner. Mm. Which continent is he in? He's ordered himself three dishes from that continent. One of them looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and where is he? I'm sure I think someone at home would think that they all look delicious. The one in the middle, I know you can actually get in a quite yeah. a famous shop and lots of my friends love them and actually if you love them they've just released on their social media pages the a recipe. recipe for how to make them at home with the gravy sauce that you buy them in there so so if you do think that looks delicious why not uh, have a go right okay. some answers, answers. ready here we go okay so question one that was the slinky dog zigzag in um, spin, which is in Disneyland Paris, and of course it's from Toy Story. And this one from Harry Potter, I love to go to Harry Potter world, but I'm saying this, a flight of the Hippogriff Universal Studios and Harry Potter. So that one, I think once you then hear it, you think, oh yeah, that is 
what it is. So it's quite tricky. Because they're the hearts as well. Yeah. Hagrid. And then E.T., if you spotted him down in the corner there, and they're on their bikes with the basket at the front. Have you not spotted him in between the people as well? Because that's what there, made yeah. me laugh. He's having a fun ride. <laughs> and then this is the Ride of the Resistance, which is a Star Wars themed ride. So if they've written any of the I Star they Wars films, they yeah. could have that. Brilliant. And then this is the Casey Junior Circus Train ride, which is at Disneyland Paris, and it's based on the circus train in Dumbo at the start of the film. Scooby-Doo, I think that's fairly obvious, you can see Scooby yeah. in the back there. And then this one is from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, so, and that's in Tokyo. Ooh. I've not seen that film, so I think that's quite funny. Yeah? Um, and this one, of course, Monsters Inc. So, ride and go seek. I've been to Tokyo. No, I've been to Japan. And then Madagascar. This ride looks brilliant. I do think I'd really like this ride. I do not want to ride. So, a great adventure. It sounds like you're going splashing through. And then Jurassic Park. Or it could be Jurassic World, like you said. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. more recently. Been called Jurassic World, yeah, but this dinosaur. particular dinosaur was in Jurassic Park. That is actually a real life dinosaur. That one, that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see which continent, which continent Wally was in. There we go. Okay, first of all, he was in Africa. I think. Hopefully, you spotted the king of the king of the jungle. Yes, he lives in the jungle, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doubted myself for a second there. Um, and that one is Antarctica, which is quite tricky because um, Antarctica is obviously very, very cold. Mm -hmm. But because it's very, very cold, they don't have an, a lot of actual water precipitation. So they've got so a lot of snow dry, and they? ice, but ice is, of course, can of course be very dry because it's so windy. It's very dry there. This is Central Park in New York, so the continent is North America. And he was talking about Africa here, the longest river in the world, I which is of so the Nile, which I know some of you know. This is the Great Wall of China in Asia. And these hmm. flags, we've got Argentina, Brazil, Peru and Colombia. So he was in South America. I think Brazil is quite a recognisable flag yeah. because they've been so successful at the World Cup. But probably knew that one and this one was a little bit trickier this is actually Asia and lots of people always think of Asia as being a really hot place because there's Thailand and um, Cambodia Vietnam really warm places um, but actually some parts of Asia are quite northern so they're quite cold so both of these animals I think are native to Japan and it gets quite snowy in Japan um, and these monkeys in particular um, like to go to a place in Japan where there's sort of thermal baths. <laughs> so because they know it's so cold, Sensible. they like to get into the warm water and have a little yeah. bath, which is very sweet. So that's what that monkey's doing. And then of course the cobra and the jaguar as well. That's how he keeps his fur so clean. There you go. His face looks a bit <laughs> chilly though, doesn't it? A bit pink. <laughs> this is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. So that is another North America. Question nine. Now, this is Australasia or Oceania. Oceania, which is what I think Ireland is being called at school. I so I think know. it has <laughs> it two, different, that one. two different names. But Australasia is what we call that continent yeah. now. And he had ordered himself an Italian pizza, some Swedish meatballs, and a German bratwurst, which means he is in Europe for his dinner. Okay. okay. These are questions that you at home sent into your teachers to go into our quiz. Yeah, so some people sent us a few questions, so we chose one from you to go in. Uh, we did receive a question from someone's dad. Unfortunately, that hasn't made the cut because <laughs> it wasn't your homework, Dad. But thank you for joining in. Um, and. Uh, one person in year four, Daisy, has written actually a whole round which is coming later on. 
Um, so you will see some questions from her as well. Okay, would you like to start? I can start. Over to Mrs. Porter. So question one. What do orang orangutans sleep in? What do orangutans sleep in? It's from Poppy in early oh. years. Thank you, Poppy. I don't know the answer to that. Poppy does. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Question two. What percentage of the Earth's surface is covered in water? That comes from James and Lucy. Good question. Now their answer is to the nearest 10 that they've given. Because there is a very specific percentage, but they're saying to you to the nearest 10%. Question three. How many colours are there in a rainbow? And that's from Jaden in early years. Thank you, Jaden. How many colours in a rainbow? You've seen a lot of rainbows at the moment, mm -hmm. so hopefully, if you think really hard, you'll be able to remember. I don't think it's that many, I think that might be a... And some people might know a rhyme that you can say, yes. or a, a little song. Little song yeah. Okay, this question came from Dylan in early years. He would like you to tell us what is the name of this dog? Excellent. He was a bit kinder when he wrote this question, actually, Dylan. He was going to tell you the name of the TV show, but we didn't want to give too much away. So we're going to show you a picture of the TV show yep. he was talking about. What's that name of the dog? The name of and the it's dog the on blue the left. Dog. Yeah. Question five. Which planet has a day which lasts almost eight months on Earth? So which planet has a day that lasts almost eight months on Earth? That's a long day. That's from Valerian in school class. I think some days can feel that long when you're <laughs> at, at the home. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Question six. Molly in Fox class would like to know, what is the highest number you can roll on two dice? Is that just two usual dice? So two regular, no, a pair of dice, regular. regular die, and if you rolled them, what's the highest number you could score? Question seven, very good topical question. What does V E day mean? And I presume you mean what does the V and the E? Yes. So Tayeb, great question. Tayeb in Adivas, what does V E? What does the V E in V E day? You'd have heard that lots, but you mm -hmm. don't always hear what it stands mm -hmm. for. Jasmine in squirrel class is asking, how many sides does an octagon have? I think she must have been revising her shapes. Question nine, which is from Amar in squirrel class. In which species of animal does the male, rather than the female, undergo pregnancy? And give birth to the young. So which species? Now I know Amar's parent, adult, whoever emailed us said that they'd recently found this out and thought it was it fascinating. Amazing. So when they were asked for a quiz question, it's the first thing they thought of because they thought it was a really cool fact. They have a lot of babies as well, don't they? They give birth yeah, to thousands, of young. I think. And the last one comes from Henry in rabbit class, who is asked. What species of shark is the biggest that's ever lived? This is quite a famous one, so if you yeah. know, you definitely know. Round four. Okay, <laughs> Mrs. Porter had a really good idea for this round. Um, she thought that we could do musical clips from films and TV shows, um, but unfortunately, due to the licensing rights of YouTube and other such um, websites, other music channels are available, um, we're not allowed to use those no. music clips. But it's okay, this is what said a better idea, we're going to use the pro professional musical instrument of the kazoo to try and perform for you eight songs or theme tunes that are very famous from film or TV. Good they're, luck. They're really recognisable, <laughs> usually. You would hear them and just know straight away what it is. However. Not usually played on a kazoo though. Um, and our musical ability <laughs> is questionable. So, here we go. We'll and it's the third time we've recorded this because We're not we really... have collapsed in giggles a couple of times. <laughs> so we'll do our best to get through it. Yes. Okay, okay here luck. we go. Question one. <laughs> Question 
to. because I love it so much and it makes me feel happy and it makes me think but I I've got it now I've got it I've got it I've got it I've got it but every, I get lost in it because I love that tune and well I also it's beautiful I think it was probably originally written on the zoo <laughs> um, before it went to the wider orchestra <laughs> okay I'll be ready question four <laughs> because this week's superb prize or we could have inspired them to want to play we could have but if we've not <laughs> completely ruined the idea of a kazoo for you Forever. then um, our superb prize this week is going to be your very own family set of kazoos um, and play that tune mm -hmm. which you might get a taster of later on in one yeah. of our future rounds um, because we need to pass some time. That sounds really it's rude, really, but you'll understand. It's really good fun. We, yeah. we play it to family at home. Okay. 
<laughs> so you really, nice sh- <laughs> you really should be better on the kazoo then. <laughs> Honestly, you should have seen me before. <laughs> Okay, right, we're going to go through the answers. So, question one. There we go, Mrs. Porter. No, you're doing the next. I no, did no. not know that. That's what it makes sense. sense. Mm. From what I've seen in the zoo and things like that, I can see that you might be able to do this. Seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Mm. It's seventy-one percent. So, if you've written mm. that, then brilliant. I think it's actually seventy-one point two or point one or something but they were looking for the nearest ten which of course is seventy and there are seven colours in the rainbow do you know a right you put a nice I can't remember Richard of York named battles in vain that's what I was thinking yes. just got yes Richard so Richard of York named battles in vain yeah well done Jaden okay Dylan was looking for Blue, and that is blue from Blue's Clues, which is what and he's the blue specials. dog. He's the blue dog. That's why I couldn't say what's say I what's the name. Say, of, oh, you gave a clue. I did, yeah. and then I thought, oh, said it. But never mind. <laughs> and then number five, Venus has a day which lasts almost eight months on Earth. And is that to do with how far it is away? It's how far it is away, and, and it's, it's rotation. Yeah, it's about how it rotates, and I think it's. Um, Oh, I didn't know how many hours that was. But when you when you convert, we have a 24-hour day. Mm-hmm. If you convert it the same amount of hours, it's, it's about 7.8 months. So, yeah. Okay, Molly. It seemed like a trick question, but she just wanted you to know that 6 is the highest number on a die. So 6 add 6 would be 12. And then VE, the VE, VE day, stands for Victory in Europe Day. It marks the end of the fighting in Europe towards the end of the Second World War. So victory in Europe. So as long as you've got victory in Europe as your answer, yeah. then I think you can tell at that point. Octagon has eight sides. An octopus has eight legs, and an octagon mm-hmm. has eight sides. And male seahorses are the species of animal that undergo pregnancy and give birth to the young. You can see them all coming up there, whether it's saying so many babies all at once. And um, this question reminded me, when I saw this question coming from Henry, that I was in, uh, when I was in Panama, I went to a really good science museum and they had um, an example of uh, the megalodon's jaw. Wow, you can really see so you can see that's thing. me. Obviously, I'm not actually that small. So imagine mm-hmm. an actual size me and how huge it is. And it's got rows and rows of teeth inside. And the megalodon doesn't exist anymore. It would have been around, I think, the same time as dinosaurs. Mm. And it is the largest animal that has ever lived, not just the biggest shark. So the megalodon. Good question. Mm, very good. Okay, and the tune, let's see how well you did with this. Eight points up for grabs, and I'm sure you've got all eight. Um, Probably we won't replay them, because people have suffered enough, so we'll (laughs) let you um, enjoy the rest of the quiz now. First of all, we had Pirates of the Caribbean. I couldn't remember the tune to that, so Mrs. Porter wrote down, Da, 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 on my (laughs) post-it note, so that I would remember. (laughs) And this one was Bare Necessities from the Jungle Book. So if you yeah. wrote Bare Necessities or you wrote Jungle Book, you can have a point. That's a point. Um, Harry Potter was the beautiful third performance that you heard this evening. <laughs> Not necessarily played on a <laughs> And then this one from Star Wars. And what do you have on your post it I have duh, 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 written on my side. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that how music is usually <laughs> given to musicians? Or? For the kazoo. Yes. For the kazoo, it's always yeah. in does. Yeah. Okay. Number five, that was Jaws. Hopefully you got that. And number six was Chim Chimmery from the um, film Mary Poppins, the musical Mary Poppins. So you can have a point for eight. Because I always know that song's from Mary Poppins, but I don't always know it's called Chim Chim Chiri or whatever. Chim 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 Chiri. Question seven, that was of course Friends, and we supported a wonderful uh, percussion of the uh, 
to the kazoo, and then the final one, we'll have the opening um, song from Strictly Come Dancing, which is my favourite, favourite solo show. Okay, right, we're going to have a treasure hunt round now. So this one's a bit different because this one you're going to have to actually get up and move around and then you're going to have to score it yourself as well, like the rest of the quiz. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to have is, in a moment, we're going to we've made a sort of shopping list of eight items, and you're going to have four minutes. So when, once we start the time, we'll let you know. We'll count you in to go and find those eight items from around your house. And we would love to see once you've found them. If you take a picture oh, yeah. and put it in the comments with your team name and your score, that'd be amazing. We'd love to see what you find. You don't need to start yet. We're going to read them all. And then we're going to count you off, okay? So, first of all, you need to find something longer than your arm. That can be whoever's arm you decide. <coughs> something spotty. Find something spotty. It can be anything at all. Something delicious. Something that makes a sound. Something that you can fit in a matchbox. So, very small. Something that comes in a pair and you need both things within the pair, so something that comes in a pair. Something that you can see through, so if Mrs. Fortune and I were playing, we might have an mm -hmm. advantage. <laughs> um, or something that is unique to your house, so something that it could be that is really special to you or that you think no one else would have in their house, that's mm -hmm. unusual to you, that's unique to your house. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Right. Whilst the four minutes are going, we are going to be enjoying some play that tune. So we're not going to leave you in silence. We're going to um, leave you with the sweet, sweet, soothing sounds of kazoo in the background. So are we ready, Mr. Porter? Mm -hmm. On your marks, get set, go. Okay, I'll go first. Um, oh, yes, of course. You're going first, are you? Okay. Yes. I'll try again. <laughs> you just <start> okay. <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> okay. Pass. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to I'll add that to that? Your turn. <laughs> okay, ready? Get it. Yeah, okay. I don't know how much of this I can do, okay. but I think hopefully you'll get it from okay. here today. Old and I don't think you <laughs> know it. Okay, ready? Yeah. 
found like very little of this song. Oh, for goodness sake, okay. <laughs> Some of them are obviously a little bit subjective because something delicious, you know, if you'd yeah, gone for you, gherkins, okay. I would probably say no, but you would say yes. So yeah. you're going to have to just be your own judges on that round. Okay. Right, round six. We've got two rounds to go. Round six, this is lovely linguistics. So at school, um, the children here at Maylands, we know, learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they also have done quite a lot of French with, um, we have Miss Hastings who is French and Mr. Kellum who was here last year did a lot of French. Um, and there are some other questions thrown in for um, things that we think you will know or be able to work out based on what you have seen or done at school. Things you might know. Things you won't know. Okay, question one. Which number is cinco in Spanish? I nearly put my fingers up to signify which number that was. You write it down in English. So which number is cinco? Question two. Which colour is naranja? You write it down in English. So if I was in Spain and I said I would like some, uh, my new car to be naranja, mm -hmm. what colour would it be? Question three, which animal is perro in Spanish? So if I went to the pet shop in Spain and bought a perro, what would I have bought? Question four, which number is wheat in French? So you might have to, sometimes you have to start from the beginning, don't you, and count through, and then when you get to it, which number was wheat? You write it down in English. Which animal is poisson in French? So if I was in France and I went to the pet shop, because I'm often going to the pet shops in other countries, <laughs> and I bought a poisson, what would I have bought? And my poisson was noir. So which colour was it? Looking for noir. Now this is a German word, we don't learn German at our school, but I think you might know because you might have heard this word, schnell. What does that mean in English? It's a German word, it's also a Dutch word, uh, and it means pretty much the same thing in both languages. Something in our school has that name, doesn't it? Might do, yeah. And the name, that thing, might give you a clue. Yeah. For this question, you need to match the Christmas card with the language it is written in. And I'm going to be a bit mean. You have to have all three correct to get, get a on. point. Yeah. What about they so, got two? They're half. Well, yes, all right. So we've got... Oh, now this is where I, I don't... I, I'm going to give it a go. 
Crassian Ferisit, Buon Natale, and Feliz Navidad. Now I'm sure there'll be someone watching this and you actually speak and one of those language languages speak, and you'll be yeah. thinking, oh, so I am very sorry because I don't speak all three of those languages. I'm going to change it now, so if you need a bit longer you can just pause and have a little chat. Okay, this time there are two points up for grabs. Okay, you need to match the word and the language that it came from. So we've got four words, origami, safari, denim and poker. And you need to choose the language that that word originated from. Was it French, Japanese, Czech or Swahili? There are two points up for grabs. So if you get two or more correct, you could have one point. If you get three or four correct, you can have two points. Is that fair? Yes, yeah. fair. If you only get one correct, you, you don't get any, I'm afraid. No. Okay. Okay. Right, this round, very excited to be reading this round. This round, all of the questions were sent in by Daisy in year four. Thank you, Daisy. So, awesome animals. So, we've got ten questions. Ten questions, yeah. Daisy had written twelve, so I've, I've chosen yeah. the best ten that I thought would. Okay, brilliant. So, question one. Why do Komodo dragon babies stay in trees? Why do the Komodo dragon babies stay in trees? Question two. How many legs do spiders have? When they're not wearing tutus. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. What bird is nicknamed the sea parrot? Question four, what is a baby kangaroo called? Baby kangaroo. Very sweet, that one. Okay. Question five, how many horns do black linos have? How many horns does a black rhino have? I like the fact it's got a little uh, party hat on there to cover up. No clues in that one. Question six. What colour is a polar bear's skin? I can remember being very surprised by the answer to this question when I learnt it when I was younger. Question seven. Which continent is the aardvark native to? Which continent? I really like aardvarks. I always think that they're not a real animal. They should have been real, should they? Like a story animal. And then yeah. you see a photo Fantasy. and you think, oh yes it is. Question eight. <laughs> What shaped poo do wombats have? I think Daisy just wanted to make one of us say poo. Yes. So what shaped poo do wombats have? And I actually had to Google wombat poo to check her Which answer. So now we've both said it. <laughs> <laughs> Question nine. How many eyes do caterpillars have? How many eyes do caterpillars have? And I didn't know the answer to this one. I had to Google it to find out and I was surprised. Are they allowed to Google it now? No. No. No Googling. You can Google it after to check we were right. Other search <laughs> engines are available. <right. laughs> Question 10. How tall is a baby giraffe? My favourite. Thank That's you, Daisy, for putting the giraffe in there for me. <laughs> so how tall is a baby giraffe? That's in feet or metres. Um, We've got the answer in the hands, like ponies. Not in hands, not in cubes, not in um, bananas, anything else. Okay, right, we're going to go through the answers to the last two rounds now. So, Cinco was number five, which is what I nearly did when I said <laughs> Cinco. <laughs> number five. And Naranja is the colour orange. I. It's also, interestingly, the fruit, orange and orange yes. are the same also in French and in Spanish, which is, I just always mm. think, maybe it's not actually, maybe that's quite boring, but I think it's interesting. <laughs> the word perro is Spanish for dog. And the number eight is wheat in French, so I've made the wrong, wrong word yellow, yellow. there. <laughs> so number 
that. But it's eight. eight that you're writing down. And uh, poisson, I've done it again, is and French for fish. 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 Oh, <laughs> we've got a we really new this one. <laughs> the colour black is noir in French. We're looking for the colour black. So, un poisson noir, I think is a black fish. Mr. Kellum probably yes, tell me if that's wrong. This is tasting to tell her. The German word schnell means fast, and one of our snails is called schnell. It's German for fast, and in Dutch it means speedy, so nearly the same. Yes. And here are the correct matches. So our first Christmas card was in Romanian. Our second Christmas card was in Italian and the third one was in Spanish. The Italian one does actually have the Italian flag on it as well, which you might have noticed or you might have just thought those were Christmas colours. I thought it was a little We've got secret lots of children in school that will be able to tell us how we should have said that. Yes, okay. and so really, like when we were I ought to have asked school, them. We'll be able to ask them, won't we? Yeah, I ought to have asked I'm someone to help me, but I'm sure they will when they return. Okay, the correct matches are mm. origami is a Japanese word, it's a Japanese art, and um, safari is a Swahili word, denim is French, um, it's short for something, it's, it's de means of, and then nim is short for nimel or nimbel, which is a place in France where that right. material is manufactured, so it, it used to mean of that place. And poker is a Czech word. So if you got two of those right, you could have one point, and if you got three or four right, you could have two points for that. Okay. Let's see Daisy's answers. So the Komodo dragon, the babies have to stay in the trees because the parents would eat them otherwise. So, so they are eaten by their parents. I did not know that until I saw Daisy's quiz. So, so they're not eaten. Oh, sorry. Spiders have eight warning. legs. We should have had a warning for that one, shouldn't we? Before we showed it, yeah. It's not. It's not real. <laughs> and then the puffin is the bird that's nicknamed the sea parrot. The puffin. Question four: A baby kangaroo is called a joey. <laughs> Very sweet. The black rhino has two horns. Two. You might have thought it was only one. Don't know. It's two. Bit tricky because the hat looked like just one as well. Yeah. So that was. And then a polar bear skin is black. So if you look just at the polar bear's see. nose, you can sort of Round see it, that that under the where the hair is a bit finer. I suppose you can see that it's a bit darker. But that's because his skin's black. So if he had a really interesting haircut, if he asked someone mm -hmm. to give him a lockdown haircut, he would be a different colour. Um, the aardvark is native to Africa. That could have been in your continent, Squeeze. Could have, yeah. Question eight. Uh, wombats produce cube-shaped poos. I've, I've Googled that to check and it is... Poor wombat. Uh, they're it's the only animal say. that do it. <laughs> and then caterpillars have 12 legs. And we did read to the that Mrs. Oh, Paul's sorry, eyes. I apologise. They have more legs than that sometimes, don't they? So caterpillars have twelve eyes. We did Google and we had a look and we mm. saw that it could be as many as twelve sometimes, but most as often, many as uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> as many as ten or eight, but it's usually twelve. I apologise. Mm. Usually twelve. And then a baby giraffe is six feet tall, so a little bit taller than me. And that's when it's a baby, 1.8 metres. And they're very cute when they're babies as well. They come out sort of a little bit gangly, well, don't well, they? surprising, is it? All those <laughs> they're so tall, they? they've not worked it out yet. Okay, that is the end of our second Ooh. superb quiz, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, so, don't forget to comment with your team name and your tell us your, the number of points that you scored and then we will put you into our drawer yeah. to win this fantastic not this game we'll send you a new one <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry we're not going to give you second hand concerns we will send oh, one to your person. house um, and you can enjoy playing yeah and if you put a photograph of what you found in your yeah, treasure hunt really round, we'd be really interested to see 
what you found at home. So we hope that you're staying safe, keeping well, and uh, we'll see you all very soon. Goodbye. Bye.